Let's welcome Mikhail on stage with his talk about securing AM uh, web apps by hacking them. Welcome, Mikhail. Uh, hello, I'm Mikhail Igorov, uh, aka O Angel, and I'm happy to be here and see you all. I came from Moscow, Russia, and uh, today I'll be speaking about how to identify uh, gaps in security of your uh, IAM application before the uh, bad guys do that. Uh, let's begin with some uh, introduction. Uh, I'm an uh, independent security researcher and do full-time bug hunting. Uh, for those of you who've uh, never heard about uh, bug bounties, uh, companies uh, pay good guys or so-called uh, white hats for uh, vulnerabilities uh, they find in company assets. Uh, companies can handle uh, bug bounty programs on their own or through platforms uh, like uh, Bug uh, Crowd or HackerOne. Uh, before full-time uh, bug hunter career, I worked as a full-time uh, application security engineer and security researcher in international vendor companies that uh, have R&D offices in Moscow. Uh, I should say that investing time in uh, security research helps me uh, much in uh, bug bounty <coughs> uh, and uh, pays off well. AM research I started in uh, 2015, continued in uh, 2018, and in uh, 2019 made me a successful bug hunter. Uh, also, I'm a conference speaker. I tend to speak generally for uh, info security folks and uh, hackers. And here are mostly developers. And it's quite uncommon for me. I hope you will not be tired of my presentation. Uh, if you are interested in my past research, uh, you can look at uh, my slide shares or decks. Uh, besides information security, I have interests in artificial intelligence and uh, neurobiology. Uh, <clears throat> it's not a surprise for you that many big internet sites are built with AM. Uh, here I presented some paid bug bounty programs that are are publicly known and have AM targets included in their scope. And you see that quite big names are here. Uh, I started to look into AM security in 2015. Uh, at the time, I was invited to bug bounty program uh, where I found a critical vulnerability that allowed me to uh, remotely execute arbitrary code on AM application. Uh, I described techniques I used and prepared a talk uh, for PhD's conference. It's a conference which takes place uh, in Moscow every uh, year in spring. Uh, in 2018, I discovered four new vulnerabilities in uh, AM. Uh, for two of them, Adobe Product Security uh, Incident Response Team uh, assigned so-called CVIDs. And I prepared a talk for a activity conference held in Budapest. I talked about uh, techniques I use uh, in my practice to hunt for uh, bugs during bug bounty engagements and included uh, details of vulnerabilities I had found as well. Uh, as an added bonus, I released a tool set uh, to automate security assessment of AM applications. Uh, later, I gave a refined version of my talk uh, on Level Up conference. Uh, it's an online conference held by Bug Crowd uh, in the beginning of 2019. Uh, you can get all outlined presentation from uh, my slide share. Uh, and this year, I've reported four new potential security uh, vulnerabilities to Adobe. Uh, several XML external entity issues and one code injection. 
Uh, I want to outline these slides and blog posts. Uh, they are high quality uh, material about AM security from uh, fellow security researchers, uh, Peter Atkins, Franz Rosen, and Jonathan uh, Bowman. Uh, I guess most of you should know this uh, much better than me. Uh, nevertheless, just a quick recap of a typical uh, AM deployment scenario. In a common AM deployment, there are three main components. Uh, author instance, publish instance, and uh, dispatcher. Uh, author instance is placed deep inside a backnet and is not visible from the internet. Uh, content is published on also instance and through replication mechanisms it propagates to uh, publish instances uh, where users normally uh, communicate with publish instance uh, through AM dispatcher. AM dispatcher acts as a reverse proxy. Uh, there can be additional components that sit between user and AM dispatcher. Uh, for example, web application firewalls or CDNs like uh, Cloudflare or Akamai. Uh, and AM could be deployed on premise or in the cloud, for example, in AWS. Uh, AM is a complex software, it's a mixture of different components uh, OAK GCR, Apache Slink, Apache Felix, numerous OSGI bundles. Uh, third-party plug, uh, plugins and uh, your own code. Uh, as we've seen on the previous slide, AM has quite complex deployment and diagram as well. And eventually this complexity of software and deployment one day can uh, demolish the security of uh, your IAM application because there are uh, so many places for a failure. Uh, vulnerabilities can arise uh, due to IAM misconfiguration or might be introduced by your own code or uh, third-party plugins you install. Uh, even I IAM code itself can contain vulnerabilities. Uh, luckily, Adobe accepts uh, vulnerability reports uh, from uh, researchers and publishes security advisories uh, for vulnerabilities. Uh, they also assign so-called CV uh, identifiers uh, for vulnerabilities and acknowledge uh, researchers. Uh, but unfortunately, Adobe doesn't pay for findings, and they doesn't have uh, even paid bug bounty program for their uh, web assets as well. Uh, only a vulnerability disclosure program on HackerOne. And, uh, I would not be wrong if I say that researchers are sort of reluctant to uh, report uh, vulnerabilities uh, to Adobe. Uh, but as for me, I understood that uh, the research time I spend on AEM pays off well on other bug bounty programs, uh, since AEM is quite widespread uh, target. Uh, and as an enjoyable bonus, I can speak about my uh, findings on conferences. Uh, that's all for introduction part. Uh, now, uh, now move on to discussing sources of vulnerabilities in more details. Uh, and let's start with AM misconfigurations that lead to security issues. Uh, AM Dispatcher is an important component uh, that protects your uh, IAM application from various attacks. Uh, if con uh, configured appropriately, it could protect you from bad guys trying to uh, exploit uh, misconfigured access rights in GCR or vulnerable components of AM. Uh, but of course, Dispatcher is just a piece of software on its own and can contain security issues too. Uh, for example, CV issued in 2016 uh, allowed to easily bypass the dispatcher just by appending uh, slash a.css or slash a.ico suffixes to the URL uh, you are trying to uh, access. Uh, that's why it's vital to uh, follow defense in-depth uh, principle and minimize possible attack surface. Uh, when you are not uh, only rely on uh, dispatcher ability to contain the attack, 
uh, but in addition to strict dispatcher policy, you uh, have security patch management and uh, configure access rights and GCR in a proper way. Uh, another bypass uh, discovered by me, uh, initially I thought it was a bug in AM dispatcher and I reported it to Adobe, but uh, they didn't consider my finding a vulnerability. And uh, later I realized why. Uh, it turns out that uh, when Sling servlet is registered with pass and not resource type, all properties except sling.servlet.pass uh, are ignored. I found this phrase is written in the official uh, Sling documentation. Uh, and it's uh, not a recommended way to register your servlets. Uh, nevertheless, many internal AM uh, servlets are registered this way. And it's easy to bypass strict extension check with extension filter by just adding uh, .css or .ico uh, when you call such servlets. Uh, for example, uh, query builder JSON servlet is registered with the path. And in bug bounties, I quite often can uh, access it by adding .css or .ico uh, uh, suffix to the URL. If servlet is registered via resource type, uh, there is still a trick to bypass AM dispatcher and call the servlet. I have no ideas, but uh, it's quite common uh, when uh, not content user generated at e commerce uh, smart list in GCR is writable by anonymous user. Uh, by creating subnode of desired resource type, it's possible to call any servlet registered by type. Uh, for example, even when access to uh, lips pass is explicitly prohibited by the dispatcher, uh, you still can access some juicy servlets registered by resource type using this trick. Uh, and I want to share some ideas about dispatcher secure configuration. Uh, my tips uh, should enhance the overall protection of the dispatcher. Uh, however, I'm not promising that they make your dispatcher 100% unbreakable. Uh, first, don't use allow rules with URL filter to only match the extension of the uh, file. It's a bad idea because it leads to bypasses similar to CV that I've just demonstrated. Uh, instead, use extension filter. It skips suffix and looks for the real extension of the file. Uh, dispatcher works in a such way that it checks sequentially rules uh, that are explicitly uh, specified uh, in the policy against the incoming request. And only the last rule that matches the request is applied. Uh, because of uh, this, you should use explicit deny rules for dangerous endpoints and servlets that are registered by pass. Uh, it's crucial that you place deny rules in the end of the policy. Uh, for example, you can prohibit access to endpoints that have path started with lips and limit access to uh, query builder this way. Uh, default credentials is a big issue. Uh, in bug bounty programs, I constantly observe AM application with default credentials. Uh, user admin with default password admin uh, is a super user and can do anything on AM application. Attacker can upload a malicious OSGI bundle or malicious uh, Sling script to uh, execute arbitrary code on AM instance and, for example, mine uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, user also uh, is uh, also quite powerful. Uh, he has uh, right access to uh, content uh, GCR node. Uh, utilizing OSR account, attacker can completely deface your AM application and upload uh, malicious content uh, on, on it. Uh, in addition, it's a common thing to see a uh, Geometrics demo project is left on AM sites. Uh, Geometrics brings uh, many users with known uh, credentials. Uh, this uses aren't so powerful compared to uh, admin and author. Uh, 
Uh, however, these users are allowed to write uh, to some places in GCR, and this leads to stored uh, cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, and due to vulnerabilities I've found recently, it's possible to execute XML external entity and code, uh, code injection attacks. I'm not able to talk about XXE and code injection uh, because uh, Adobe is fixing these issues uh, uh, currently, and I'm waiting for the official uh, advisory from Adobe at the end of September to release the technical details about vulnerabilities. Uh, to sum up, uh, you should take away the idea that uh, you should avoid default credentials on your AM application uh, by disabling uh, admin and also users or changing their passwords and remove geometrics. Uh, here is the example from a bug bounty program. Uh, AM application had default admin credentials and I was able to upload OSGI bundle via Felix console uh, by navigating to system console bundles. I had an ability to execute arbitrary code. As you might see, I uh, easily bypass the dispatcher by appending uh, semicolon percent zero AA dot CSS suffix to the URL. Uh, even if you disable default users, uh, there is still a room for attacks. Uh, some of custom AM users might have weak passwords too. Uh, in fact, it's easy to mount uh, credentials guessing attack against AM. Uh, attacker can uh, know uh, valid usernames by inspecting attributes of nodes in GCR, like GCR created by or GCR last modified by, and later attacker can check validity of passwords from a dictionary of common passwords or leaked passwords uh, uh, using uh, some endpoints, uh, for example, a login uh, status servlet or similar endpoints. And you should consider brute force attacks and apply password complexity requirements for uh, your application. Uh, another big security problem that can threaten your IEM is weak permissions in GCR. Uh, weak permissions uh, lead to disclosure of sensitive information like API tokens, passwords, uh, cryptographic keys, uh, personal identifiable information. Uh, and in case of possibility to write somewhere in GCR, uh, the attacker can exploit uh, stored cross-site scripting, XML external entity, server-side request forgery, and code uh, injection vulnerabilities. And it's important to be aware that there are plenty of ways to access GCR for reading. Uh, for example, if you block uh, query builder JSON servlet by prohibiting access to uh, being query builder.json on dispatcher level, uh, attacker can try to access information from GCR by other means. Uh, for example, using uh, JQL search servlet or default get servlet. Uh, that's why layered security is very important for your IAM application. Uh, I noticed that on many IAM applications, I observed uh, not content user generated at C commerce smart lists was writable by anonymous user. And uh, it makes IAM vulnerable to various attacks. And you should check this for your IAM application if you have not done this yet. Uh, we proceed with several examples of access control misconfigurations. Uh, here you see that uh, read permissions to OSA instance configuration uh, were given to anonymous user. Uh, configuration stored username and password in clear text to access internal uh, database management system. Uh, access was restricted on dispatcher level, whilst it should be done on GCR level too. Uh, I added a slash a.ico suffix to the URL to bypass the dispatcher and access credentials. Uh, another example, uh, what you see here is an interface of uh, Burp Suite, a popular tool among hackers who work with web applications. Uh, on the left side, you see the HTTP request, on, uh, and on the right side, you see HTTP response. 
returning to the example, uh, production configuration with passwords uh, inside zip archive was available for download to an anonymous user. Uh, firstly, I found this archive using a query builder feed servlet. Uh, here I use trick to bypass AM dispatcher by appending a semicolon percent zero AA dot CSS suffix to the URL. And later I was able to download zip archive with passwords. Uh, one more example. Uh, using Query Builder JSON servlet, uh, I accessed lots of SAML tokens and hashed passwords of users. Uh, some words about hashed passwords in AAM. It's possible uh, to recover passwords from their hashes using a uh, renowned John the Ripper password cracking utility. Uh, currently, it supports hash formats of AAM. Uh, I used uh, suffix.css to bypass AM dispatcher when I was accessing Query Builder JSON servlet. Uh, uh, usually, additional bundles and packages are installed on AM instance. Uh, some of them include handy frameworks, others include additional consoles or fiddles that is the administration. And it's simple to overlook vulnerabilities in these components or misconfigure them, introducing a vulnerability. Uh, let's see some examples of such issues I've encountered uh, in my bug bounty experience. Uh, Groovy console is quite popular. It allows to execute arbitrary Groovy scripts on AM. On AM. The uh, problem is that console does not offer any authentication authorization by default. Uh, by sending a POST request to URL bin groovy console post.servlet, it's possible to run arbitrary shell commands. Uh, and just before the conference, following Stefan's advice, I created a GitHub issue for that problem. Anyway, if you use groovy console, um, Right now, uh, make sure that it's not accessible from the internet. Uh, you can explicitly deny, uh, uh, add deny rule on dispatcher to uh, forbid the access. Uh, or you can configure allowed groups property for Groovy console configuration appropriately as written in uh, readme.md file. Uh, here is an example from Bug Bounty program uh, where exposed Groovy console allowed me to run arbitrary shell commands on uh, uh, one popular public internet site as anonymous user. A uh, script from the screenshot allowed me to read HC password file as proof of concept. Uh, ACS AM tools uh, is another popular bundle. Uh, among others, other things, it contains Fiddle to run scripts of various formats, including GSP. I observed some AM applications that didn't require authentication to access the Fiddle or use default uh, admin credentials, and obviously this leads to arbitrary code execution. Uh, this screenshot depicts example where I found AM application with default admin credentials and exposed Fiddle. Uh, from ACS AM tools and was able to uh, execute if config shell command. Uh, now I'll show some examples of vulnerabilities uh, found previously in AM. Uh, a short while ago, I've reported four potential issues to Adobe Product Security Incident Response Team. Uh, three of them are XML external entity vulnerabilities, uh, which allow to read local files from the server. And one uh, is code injection that allows to execute arbitrary commands on the server uh, for some versions of AAM. Uh, initially, I had, plan uh, had uh, plans to responsibly disclose uh, technical details of my findings on the conference. Unfortunately, uh, Adobe will release official advisory and patch at the end of September. Uh, therefore, I am not able to speak about uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, so stay tuned for upcoming Adobe security advisory and uh, patch your IAM application in time. Uh, then I have no choice but to speak about some past vulnerabilities. 
the first one I found a year ago and reported to Adobe. It affected all AM versions starting from uh, 6.0. Uh, it has official security advisory, it, and uh, according to Adobe's classification, has important severity. Uh, this vulnerability is server-side request forgery, aka uh, SSRF vulnerability in reporting services proxy servlet, uh, the part of CQ content inside bundle. Uh, I should explain SSRF first. Uh, this kind of vulnerability allows the attacker to make HTTP a request to an arbitrary URL on behalf of the vulnerable server-side component. And quite often, uh, the attacker can not only make HTTP request, but also see the full response. A and in that way, he can exfiltrate uh, sensitive data out of internal network or internal services. Uh, so, returning to reporting services proxy servlet, uh, you can see the definition of, uh, of it, uh, of the corresponding class on the slide. Uh, to invoke servlet, you should send get request to pass where GCR node of resource type CQ content proxy exists. And additionally, specify uh, select uh, reporting services and uh, extension JSON. Uh, what uh, servlet does? It uh, simply makes get request to some uh, th uh, third party API and proxies the response back to the client. Uh, I found two suitable GCR nodes in default AM configuration. Uh, you can uh, see pass values to uh, access them. Uh, Servlet allows to specify parameter named URL to access URLs on host names that uh, look like API version number uh, .omnitude.com. Uh, code of the servlet checks that uh, past URL parameter is allowed by using a regular expression presented on the previous slide. Uh, you see the regular expression is highlighted. And as you might guess, regular expression is too permissive. Uh, you can access arbitrary URL by placing hash sign in the end of your U URL and after uh, suffix part that is required by the regular expression, as shown on the slide. And uh, now let's see some uh, uh, examples how the attacker can exploit such a serif vulnerability. Uh, quite often, AM is deployed in the cloud, for example, e in AWS. Uh, there is a special uh, metadata service resides on uh, IP address 169.254.169.254 in AWS. This service is uh, exclusive for EC2 instance and may contain temporary credentials for identity and access management roles. Uh, among bug bounty targets, I found AM vulnerable to aforementioned as uh, SSRF vulnerability and access credentials on metadata servers. Uh, you see this uh, on the screenshot. If you are wondering what does hostname starting with one YN mean, uh, this hostname resolves to IP address of metadata servers. This is a known trick to bypass uh, blacklist restriction during SSRF exploitation. Uh, next example, uh, SRF allowed me to completely bypass AM Dispatcher. Uh, it was not possible to access Etsy node with Puppet uh, module configuration using default get servlet uh, directly. Uh, how uh, however, using SRF, I accessed AM publish instance on localhost and port uh, 4503 and was able to dump private key and other juicy stuff from Puppet configuration by passing the dispatcher. Uh, besides accessing sensitive information, it's possible to exploit a SRF as cross-site scripting attack uh, by pointing to URL under your control that returns uh, HTML. Uh, the, convenient, uh, the convenience for the attack is that a web applic uh, application firewall uh, won't uh, catch such XSS uh, since there are no uh, suspicious HTML uh, tags to block in the request. Uh, another vulnerability I want to talk about 
uh, it affects only old AM versions that are currently not supported officially as far as I'm aware. I don't actually know uh, if it has CV ID or official advisory. Uh, external uh, job post servlet was affected by uh, classical deserialization vulnerability when untrusted data gets deserialized. Uh, this kind of vulnerabilities uh, is widespread in Java world. And uh, it was a, a massive blast of exploitation of such vulnerabilities and interest to them after Gabriel uh, Lawrence and Chris Frohoff uh, discovered uh, renowned uh, gadgets chain in Apache Commons Collections library uh, back in 2015. Uh, gadgets chain represents a sequence of uh, classes and method invocations that lead to some desired action for the attacker. Uh, for example, code execution. Uh, I should say that it's harder to exploit the serialization vulnerabilities in OSGI environment because each bundle has separate class paths. Uh, for external job post servlet, the, there are no suitable gadget chains for exploitation in bundles that contain the servlet. Uh, in general case, we can exploit uh, the serialization vulnerability to perform denial of service attacks. And if to our luck AM is running on old GVM, uh, then we can get code execution. Uh, on the screenshot, you see uh, the definition of external job post servlet. Uh, to invoke it, uh, you should send get head or post request uh, to pass lib libs dumb cloud proxy. Uh, external job post servlet takes parameter named uh, uh, file and performs deserialization by calling uh, object input stream read, uh, read object method. Uh, example from uh, my bug bounty experience where I reported deserialization vulnerability to perform denial of service attack. Uh, firstly, I used utility called uh, OIS uh, DOS for generating uh, attack payload. Uh, as you can see, uh, payload is small, it's highlighted on the slide, uh, but after deserialization, it consumes a lot of memory, uh, resulting in a degradation of the performance. Uh, I sent the payload, and after some waiting, I got the error saying that uh, there was a problem with Java heap on the server. Um, a year ago, I released open source tools for red teamers, pen testers, and bug hunters to automate security assessment of AM applications. Uh, tools are not 100% automatic. Uh, you need to understand what's going on and uh, interpret the results on your own. Uh, I continue to maintain uh, these open source tools, and I'm close to release new version of them. Uh, but because it's not my uh, it's uh, my non-profit activity, I'm slowly publishing new ideas and improvements to open source version of tools. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, the first project is AMRC bundle. Uh, in uh, case you have access to Felix console, by uploading the bundle, you can uh, get ability to execute uh, arbitrary shell commands quickly. Uh, a servlet for executing shell commands is available on pass bin backdoor.html. Uh, which accepts parameter CMD uh, with uh, shell command to execute. Uh, another project I called M Hacker Toolset. It consists uh, of scripts that help to assess security of AM application. A uh, Python script named AM Discoverer helps to identify uh, AM targets and is good when you have a big list of domains uh, and want to identify AM application on that list. Uh, this is a uh, foremost uh, task during bug hunting. Uh, Python script named AM Hacker uh, checks AM application for known vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. It's better to launch it from a VPS because uh, of uh, server-side request, uh, request forgery checks. Uh, Currently, all checks are done as anonymous user without uh, uh, the ability to pass any credentials. 
And now I'm going to show you a recorded demo. Uh, in the first place, you should clone AM Hacker uh, repository from GitHub. Uh, here I have a local AM uh, instance running. And we are going to launch AM Hacker script. Uh, two mandatory parameters should be supplied. Base URL of AM application and host name for back connections during SRF testing. Uh, if you are not interested in SRF checking, you can uh, pass arbitrary values in this parameter. So script is running now, and we see the results. Uh, to wrap up the talk, I want to highlight the key takeaways. Uh, as you have seen, vulnerabilities can occur on different levels. AM is complex, and one serious vulnerability somewhere is enough to compromise the whole application. Uh, so install security updates, do defense in depth. Uh, this includes configuring dispatcher appropriately, tightening access rights in GCR, uh, removing uh, default users, implementing a strict password policy. Uh, additionally, uh, test your own code for vulnerabilities with uh, static analyzers or via a mo uh, manual uh, code review process. Uh, do pin testing of AM, uh, of AM application uh, or join bug bounty platform and uh, launch a program. And the all for this talk. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter, and if you have any question, uh, you can ask me. Um, you always talk about securing dispatcher better with the dispatcher configuration, but yeah. you could achieve the same thing in the Apache layer with rewrite rules in front of the dispatcher. Would you prefer that over doing it in dispatcher itself? So you mean to configure security on the Apache server? Yes, with rewrite, like blocking like the bin folder just with the rewrite rule instead of actually having it to go to a module in Apache that's the dispatcher. Um, but I'm afraid that Apache doesn't know anything of how Slink works, how AM works. It will be uh, harder to do it in Apache than in... Uh, so I think that um, you should uh, do it uh, complex, uh, in a complex way. So you should uh, do it on Dispatcher level, should do it on uh, uh, Slink level and... Uh, Thank you, Mikhail, for your talk. Thank you.